Okay, I'm on the Marietta bathroom. Um, this bathroom was already torn out for me, so it's going to be difficult to kind of give you an idea of what was happening here. But basically, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, and I'll show it to you. But basically, what I came in for was to remove a tub and build a shower, which turned into um, pretty much a gut. And so, because of the gut, I have to build it back. Anyway, uh, coming in here, there used to be a, a vanity um, that, well, not really a vanity, but there used to be a um, cabinet that sat over here with a countertop on it. Didn't have any plumbing whatsoever. So the fact that there was this long cabinet about six, seven foot long, and it was kind of useless, took up room which got the customer thinking about taking out this wall. This particular wall is a divider wall between the fake vanity and the bathroom, which is over here. So the sink used to be over here. It was just a single sink that sat over here. Then you had the toilet, and then you had a bathtub, a uh, shower combo, and there's a box over here, which they build generally because bathtubs are five foot long left to right um, and then they have the excess room they don't know what to do with and more often than not these boxes are built for that reason because there's just taking up filler space in this particular case we have a stack and the stack runs from downstairs um, there's some plumbing kitchen and another bathroom and stuff like that and it runs from downstairs in between those studs and then it ties into this particular stack and um, I can't move that over in between the studs because there's already something there in the way. Um, so rather than deal with that, we're going to leave that um, as it is. It goes all the way up to the attic or up to the, through the attic and into the, to the roof. So anyway, because of that stack, we're going to leave that alone and instead we're going to shorten this box. Instead of having it as long as it is, we're going to rock it off right here up to there and it'll it'll shorten the box and then the rest of it's going to be a bench so we're going to put a bench in the shower that's going to be whatever the width this is it looks about two foot so the bench will be two foot and the curb will follow along where the bench is at all the way across here to this side and it should line up pretty much with that window I'm trying to get as much shower room as possible out of the showers that I build and that's about all that's possible here uh, from over there to over there um, from where the tub was it's only maybe another five or six inches in depth um, but then again it's five foot long so there'll be a little bit more room and the five foot that we had for the tub will still be the five foot for the shower because we're not increasing the size because of the vent the bench I don't really consider a bench increasing the size of the shower when you can't when you can't walk move around in it so that's basically what's going on. We're going to leave the same fixture, not the same fixture, but we're going to leave the fixture on this exterior wall. But I just have to cut out all this and put the single handle fixture there. I'm going to bump the shower head up a little bit higher than it is right now. Um, in addition, trying to get this uh, drain on center, um, I ran into a little bit of difficulty. The old tub drain over here is inch and a half and it ran with a street elbow. Uh, to another elbow going straight down and where the p-trap was I have no idea but it definitely wasn't part of the tub um, the tub drain ran straight down into this and so my assumption is the p-trap is down below here which I can't get into between the wall um, or they simply didn't put a p-trap here either which way I need to put a p-trap in addition I need to run two inch pipe so the transition has to be from inch and a half to two inch which I cannot do because there's nowhere to cut off of here uh, to make that transition. Fortunately, um, I have this. This is a four inch ABS pipe. This four inch ABS pipe uh, is for the toilet drain. And then I have a little Y over here that goes off onto another stack um, for the toilet. So the only way to get a drain center and about where my shoe is is gonna be center um, without using that, that'll end up getting capped off that inch and a half, is to cut this open, this four inch um, drain for the toilet will be cut right about here and I'll incorporate a four inch <coughs> to two inch transition 
it's a Y and the Y will go in that direction and I'm sorry the Y will go in this direction and then I'll have to put a couple of 45's to move over here you don't want the Y to go that way because then your shower water is going to go up toward your toilet so the Y is going to end up going this way and then the 45's will turn it around and to over here and so this inevitably will be where the shower drain is at and that transition won't have to be made because the two inch off of the Y is already there so voila and then all I have to do is put a p-trap down here so that's that the toilet um, they actually want a, a double sink vanity one of the reasons this wall is coming down is so that I can incorporate a, a, a double sink vanity that is probably going to start about where this one was at the middle point and it will go in that direction over here so the toilet is going to get bumped back um, probably about a foot or so over this direction so when I cut that out then I'll extend that pipe also and uh, put the toilet flange over here and then in addition to that I need to run uh, this drain this inch and a half drain uh, for the vanity um, will get tied in with another drain somewhere around over here uh, don't have the vanity yet so I'm not quite sure of the measurements but it looks like my customer left me a schematic so that helps a lot and in addition to that I'll tie into the hot and cold supply and put T's on those in order to have hot and cold supply over here um, so that's what's going on with the plumbing uh, things there are some electrical issues that are going on also the customer bought there's a fan up here, a box fan, and they bought a new fan which has a light and they want the light fan combo right above the shower. Um, which is one of the reasons I think that the customer, when they did the tear out, they tore the ceiling out. Uh, there was some rot going on from an old roof leak and I think, I think they just kind of felt like taking out the whole ceiling was, um, was better. Uh, so, I'm going to have to put the fan over here. There is a switch over here for the fan it's not working right now one of them's a light that's the one for the fan so I have to get that working that's the light switch this is going to get moved that light switch is going to get moved and the fan light combo will also be in, incorporated into here over to this light switch so this light switch will actually get moved over this is the main light switch for that one um, that one will have to get moved over here there'll be a double um, well, it'll be this one and then both of those, so it'll be a triple switch. I think that one will go on the outside here and then on the inside, or the outside is, or um, that those two double combos will go over there. Uh, because we're putting in over here um, a pocket door. Yeah, so these studs will come out, and when the pocket door is bought, it's going to be about a 20 inch, inch pocket door then this wall will get bumped um, outward uh, in order to accommodate the 28 inch pocket door so that's what's going on there in the meantime this outlet will get tapped off of actually it won't get tapped off of that outlet uh, will actually get extended over here to above that sink where that sink is going to be for the vanity and then this outlet will in kind be over above this sink so that both sides of the sink have an outlet both of them are already GFI so it's just a matter of getting them over onto the wall um, once that's done and all the sheetrock is back up on the ceiling and on the walls um, then this floor is was anyway carpeted if you can tell the difference this was tiled and this was carpeted generally speaking they they bump up um, on those particle board, it's not plywood, but they put particle board down when they put carpet down so they'll have a nice transition into this other room. Um, and it's not needed here. This will end up being tile as well. In fact, this whole floor after the shower is built will be tiled all the way up to the closet over here. And so I got to take up this particle board and uh, put dirt rock down. So that's basically the gist of it. I think the customer has picked a porcelain tile for the shower <coughs> excuse me I've already seen it done in my mind's eye anyway it's a two by two uh, porcelain on a mat that's going to go on the shower floor um, in addition to that there's a being a 13 by 13 porcelain that goes all the way up in fact I'm going to end up building a niche between those two studs over there 
and so the niche will go there the 13 by 13 porcelain tile will go all the way up to about the niche and there'll be a border and the border is going to be um, one of those prefab borders that comes in a package but then she also bought um, a couple of what I call ropes so a rope will go top and bottom of that prefab border so that'll look nice and then the porcelain will continue all the way up to the ceiling um, and they got a bull nose so the bull nose will also be uh, part and parcel to this wall here once the bench is done in fact the bull nose was probably going to run around the bench this way and then go up the wall and then of course the bull nose is going to go up that way to the ceiling and the bull nose is going to get framed out around the niche um, so that's good and then a 12 by 12 ceramic which I don't like ceramics but that's what they bought um, it's a dowel tile ceramic and dowel tile inherently isn't spaced or, or isn't uh, honed properly it's uh, spacing is off I took two of the tile out of the box and setting up the two tile next to each other I had a flush surface on one end and about a 32nd of an inch gap on the other end so um, I'm gonna have to struggle a little bit with that it's a it's a low-end dowel tile by the way it's a low-end tile and um, you know it's what they bought and, and so I got to put it down but that's going to be um, on the floor from where the shower is all the way back as I said to there and that's basically it uh, there's quite a bit of work here generally speaking my uh, bathtub to shower comp or bathtub shower um, uh, exchange not exchange but um, uh, when I take out a bathtub and build a shower it's generally about five or six days to do just that and then all the other things that are involved here is probably going to be about somewhere about eight to ten days probably more to ten days um, a lot of this stuff is time consuming electrical alone is probably going to take me the best part of the day um, the plumbing alone is probably going to take the best part of a day maybe a day and a half and um, yeah so there's a couple days shot already before I can even do my thing uh, the sheetrock generally uh, doesn't come down off of the walls and again I, I kind of explain why they did it on the ceiling but um, I almost never, in fact, I, I don't think I've ever in 15 years taken the sheetrock off in a bathroom, literally wall to wall. I mean, they went from the closet all the way around. There's no sheetrock on any of these walls. Um, so it's a lot of extra work that I generally don't have to do, and that's why it's going to take longer. Uh, but there it is. So uh, this is day one, and I am going to get started. Okay, I am finished with this bathroom. And this has been a two-week job because there's been a lot of uh, issues that I've had to take care of. Normally bathrooms take me about 8 to 10 days, on occasion 12 days. This one is right at 14 days as of tomorrow. Um, but I am done. So uh, if you recall in the very first video, all this was going to the master bedroom was a door opening. I think it was, it was probably about 3 foot across, uh, maybe a little bit further. I think maybe it was 40 inches across. So, as a customer requested, they put, I put in a pocket door for them. Uh, the pocket door frame, as you can tell on this side, uh, was fairly easy to do only because, you know, the customer had already taken out all the sheetrock in this bathroom, which is a little unusual and it, one of the reasons it took 14 days is there was a lot of different issues like putting all the sheetrock back on the walls and the ceiling and everything that took up a lot of time. Uh, but, you know, uh, made the pocket door relatively easy to install once I actually got one that fit and had all the hardware. Home Depot is kind of crummy about that. Uh, the frame itself doesn't come with a door. The pocket door itself the customer has to buy separately. So they picked a panel door which is appropriate because panel doors in the rest of the house uh, will be matching this one. And so the pocket door uh, is a 28 inch and it opens and closes like that. Um, going into the master bedroom here and this is a truly a master bathroom now because it wasn't before if you remember there was a partition wall and that partition wall had an area back here that was wasted because they had a cabinet that didn't even have sinks or anything it was a countertop and all that stuff but it, it served no purpose and then the vanity once you walk through this door the vanity sat over there a small vanity and a toilet and then they had a bathtub and that's how it used to be set up now that that entire wall is gone and the electrical is is all sorted out that took more time also not only the sheetrock that I had to put up on all the walls including the ceiling because the ceiling got taken out too um, I also had to sort out the electrical and put it the way the customer wanted so what they wanted was 
the GFI over here for his and hers sinks. Uh, so the GFI in the middle, GFI on the end, and then a switch that goes to the fan. The fan light combo is new also. I put that in. I think it was back a little further before and so it got pushed over to where the shower is above the shower. So that's what's going on there. I like these freestanding vanities. They have legs on them and it makes it relatively easy to plumb in. Um, they just came up today. In fact, it's so heavy that I didn't even bring it up. The customer brought it up with a friend of his. Um, but, you know, it's the first time it's ever been up here. So being able to do all the measurements and know how much my floor is going to rise and all that stuff to do my plumbing, because if you recall, I also had to re-plumb from where the original vanity was about right here, and I had to plumb over to here in order to make that work and then tie into all that plumbing for a secondary sink, which never existed. Um, so all the measurements worked out really well. I was able to plumb in both sinks uh, pretty much with ease, and all the measurements that I took to in order for all these things to, to be where they're supposed to be. There's going to be a backsplash that's the same marble, uh, granite rather, that's going to go up to I think four inches or whatever. So uh, once that gets in place, then these shims can come out. And that's basically it. They, they had wanted um, a different light and they wanted it to be center here. So that light or that um, box had to get moved over to where it originally was, which I think was way over here down at the bottom. So that got rerouted and a new box put in. And then in addition to that, to all that electrical stuff and the fan getting moved and all that, um, they wanted a couple of cam lights. So there are some four inch, I think they're four inch or five inch cam lights, two of them, one here and one here, that got, also got put in. And the switching had to be rerouted. Obviously all the switching was on that wall over there. In fact, all the, everything, all the electrical was on that wall that used to be there. So we'll put this switch over here and that will be eventually that light over there and then on the opposite I put one over here which is the two can lights that I just showed you and then of course we have this switch down here which controls both the light and the fan. Um, so all the sheetrock and all the electrical issues and all the plumbing that I had to reroute and everything that, that ate up easily three or four days of this the last two weeks I've been on here. Anyway, back to the tile. We have 13 by 13 um, tile that is on a diagonal, obviously. This is, this is a pretty decent tile. It's um, a porcelain tile, and it's going to hold up really well in here. Uh, brand new toilet, and if you recall on my middle video uh, of this portion, everything had to get reworked under the floor here and moved over so that the toilet wouldn't be interfering with the shower. And then when you have the shower. Now the shower uh, turned out pretty good. It's a little uh, complicated over here because if you recall this box actually did have uh, some stacks, uh, some vent stacks that were inside the box. So um, even though I backed off and, and had to put, put a wall here and, and still have this box here, it allowed this room here for the bench, which was kind of natural, um, <coughs> the natural progression anyway, rather than just have a solid wall. That would be kind of stupid to keep that. So we actually made a bench out of this per the customer's request and made it practical uh, to kind of have that in half. Um, and then obviously because of that I had to do my uh, tiling around this box as well. And so you see the border tile got put up uh, where the customer wanted it was six rows up. And so we got put six rows up. <coughs> Excuse me. This tile down here is a two by two. Uh, it comes on a mat and I usually put four of those and I inset them into uh, the current tile that I'm working with. I do a back cut and I put four of them in there. In this case, my customer wanted to follow these medallion uh, pieces up here, the darker ones, so she got a sort of light those to put four of them in there, which I did. And obviously a new fixture and shower head that matches uh, the decor and all that stuff. And so we have the bowl nose going all the way up to the ceiling and both sides, this trim isn't here. Uh, customer had taken out both the trim and the sheetrock, so he eventually he marked where the trim is going to go, and uh, the trim will eventually go around there, which is why there's no bull nose over there. Got the contiguous curb top put in, which I really really like. I, I put in a dozen of these so far, and I like them. It makes it a lot easier instead of having five tile going across for a five foot opening you just get a six foot piece cut off a foot and put it in there and you're good to go you got no grout lines to worry about 
the slope you know goes evenly all the way across and you don't you know there's really no worries with those I love them uh, so anyway this was uh, a pleasure to do because it's, it's a larger bathroom and I'm able to work around easily and my customers were really really nice um, hi Barbara and hi Michael and it was a pleasure for working well um, pleasure working with you guys you were uh, really really nice customers and that was uh, that made all the little frustrations that I've had with this um, a lot easier to take um, but it's done and I am out of here I'm ironically uh, going back to Florida again to do another bathroom down there after uh, a couple weeks ago I had been down there to do um, a previous customers bathroom somebody else has called me back to do one down there as well they're gonna do the same thing which I'll take the video of uh, taking out a tub and put in a shower so uh, seems to be quite popular nowadays as this used to be a tub as well and I'll be doing it again in a couple of days so uh, I'm gonna get out of here and get home and get packed